Bear with me one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We back, we back, we back. Clap it up. All right. Some truth music. Hey, man, I'm happy to call you right. back. We're Captain Akud. All right. Shalom. Uh, truth will quash you. Yahweh, Shalom, 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 All right. Uh, bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. We back live, live and in full effect here. I should be K Canada. Start out of One West, of course. One West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Under, we're under the authority and leadership of Commanding General Yohanna. Commanding General Yohanna is the leader of the nation of Israel under the one you call Christ or Yahweh Shai. All right. 
he's been given that authority by the Most High, all right, through the seven heads who started, you understand, the truth, put the truth back into the earth, all right? And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to, this class is going to be uh, um, largely on the tribe of Gad, all right? The tribe of Gad, uh, particularly in Canada, so-called First Nations, all right? The, the women they call uh, a missing and murdered indigenous women, those sisters, those brothers, they're the children of the Most High God. All right, they're from the tribe of Gad. They're not savages. You understand? Their women are uh, our women are not squaws. You understand? That's another thing too. The so-called white man, through his stereotypes, he can promote hatred against us. He can promote rape against our women. You understand? Which is what he promotes. Trooper Mukwashi. Before you get the one second. Before you get the scriptures that I asked for, get me um. Wives ravish. Get me uh, second Esdras uh, ten and twenty three. Kyle Khan, second Esdras ten and twenty three. God, give me that. We're gonna, I'm gonna post a sign in link. If you do not have a Hebrew name, sign the hell in. All right, sign in. Get your Hebrew name. We're, we're only live on Facebook. All right, uh, excuse me. We're only live on YouTube this week. We're only live on YouTube. All right. So like you said, uh, second Ezra, uh, what was that again? Uh, 10 and 23, all right. Okay. This is book of second Ezra, chapter 10, verse 23. Uh -huh. And which is the greatest of all, the skill of Zion has, has now lost her honor. Matter of fact, uh, verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead, brother. Uh, our upholstery is laid on the ground. Our song is put to silence. Mm -hmm. our, our rejoicing is at an end. The light of our candlestick is put out. Our psaltery is put on silence, man. There's a dance, beautiful dances that the so-called Native American Indians did. The, the, the um, not necessarily the rain dances, okay, but the tribal dances we did. All of those things are gone. All of our festivals were gone. When the so-called white man made his first one of his first attacks upon us, upon the North American Indian in the so-called American colonies, the North American Indians were celebrating a form of the Feast of First Fruits, all right? Go look that up. They were serving the Festival of Green Ears, all right? The Festival of Green Ears.
Test, test, one, two, one, two. If we are back, we're back, we're back. Press one if you can hear and see. Press one if you can hear and see. All right. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me invite. Who knows what the hell happened there? I, camera went out and then the internet went down. Okay. There is no. There is no randomness there. All right. Um, bear me one second. Make sure it was good to go. All right. So-called Native American Indians are the prized sons and daughters of the Most High Power. All right, so-called white man, you can shut down the uh, Facebook, you can shut down the YouTube, you can shut down the internets, you can shut down the cameras, but the truth is gonna spread all across the planet Earth. All right, all right, that's what's gonna happen, man. The most high power, the most high God of Israel loves the Native American Indians and he's no longer gonna let white devils, okay, shut the word of the most high down. Read 2nd Ezra 10 and 22 from the top. Colonel and Colonel. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 10, verse 22. Our, post our pastry is laid on the ground. Our salt, salt tree, our salt tree is laid to the ground. And our salt tree is laid on the ground, Native American Indians. Why are we performing for a damn white man in our powwows? Our powwows are, pow are our culture, man, not the white man. Read on. Our song is put to silence. Our song is put to silence, man. Read on. Our rejoicing is at an end. Our rejoicing is at an end. Of all the tribes in Israel, few, if not any tribe, has the high, has, has high suicide rate as the so-called North American Indians. Look at the suicide rate of the Negro, suicide rate of the West Indian, suicide rate of the Haitian, suicide rate of the Puerto Rican, all right, of the Venezuelan, of the Argentinian, Native American. Few have as high a rate as the North American and Canadian Indian, man, as the so-called First Nations in Canada. Why? Because our rejoicing was laid down. It was laid down by General Custer, that devil. All right. It was laid down by uh, the devils that, that went to, up to Quebec to start the fur trading business, start the fur trading business and run the Iroquois and the um, what was it? Iroquois, the Iroquois out of New York and out of, out of Quebec. OK, where the hell are the Iroquois at in Quebec? They ran, ran Quebec, running around in Quebec, the so-called white man admitted that he has dealt horribly with the Native American Indians. We'll pull that video up as well. Keep reading. Khan on Khan. The light of our candlesticks is put out. The light of our candlesticks is put out. The so-called white man took our menorah, Manara, which means lamp. He put it out, he put it, he melted it, and he put it in the Roman Colosseum. Okay, the gold from our menorah, Manara, in our uh, uh, holy house, our temple to the Most High, is now in the Roman Colosseum a place of filth and murder, all right? That's what happened to our land. Read on. The Ark, of the, the Ark of our covenant is spoiled. The Ark of our covenant is spoiled. It's gone. Abraham buried it in the mountain that Moses went up. Mountain that Moses went up, okay, to go and see the Most High, the mountain that's to this day burnt at the top of it, all right? Mount Horeb, one of those mountains in Saudi Arabia. Try to go to that mountain, okay? Try and send a Haitian, a Levite, who are the only brothers that could touch the ark and not die? Try and send one of them up to the ark. All right, see what the hell happens. The Saudi Arabian government is going to put AK-47 rounds in. All right, they're going to introduce them to, to depleted uranium. That's what they're going to introduce them to. They're going to give them lead. All right, they're going to Swiss cheese them. All right, the Saudi Arabian government, along with Moab, has the so-called Chinese Moab and so-called Chinese. They have that place under lock and key. You can't. We can't get to the ark of the covenant now, and they can't either. Okay, but it's in that mountain, in that area somewhere. Read on. Khan on Khan. Our holy things are defiled. Our holy things are defiled. What is our holy thing? Our shield, man. Our shield. It's going to get into that. This is a holy thing. And that's defiled. The white man took it and used it for Kabbalah. You can find this in Kabbalah, Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic symbols for the so-called white man. So-called Jewish man took this symbol and ran it into the damn dirt by being the worst landlord on the planet Earth. Okay, and being the most vicious employer on the planet Earth, took it and ran into the damn ground. Read on. Khan Wakan. 
and the name that is called upon us, it is almost profane. The name that's called upon us, it's like it's almost something disgusting. People associate the word Jew with a crook, with a hook nose, okay, so called white man dressed in all black with tassels and with braids, not braids, but strings of hair running down the side of his head. <laughs> and they believe that that's who the Jews are. It's become disgusting. They think that crooked, oppressive landlord, the white man with nuclear power murdering Palestinians and Arabs, they think that they're Israel, that they're the Jews, they're the people of the Most High. And so it's made our name like disgusting. Read on. Our children are put are put to shame. Our children are put to shame. They they put us to shame, so-called Native American Indians. They put us to shame in Indian reform schools. All right? In Indian reform schools, we had to cut off our braids. This is what I have on. All right, the brother Trooper Bakwashia. All right, he has on braids. The Native American Indians had on braids. The white man cut our braids off. Native American Indian. I mean, it's not a, Cut, have that nice job haircut the white man loves. All right, made a shave down, cut our hair, forced us to adopt Christian principles. Understand this as well, Native American Indian First Nation. The white man did not indoctrinate us with the Bible. The white man indoctrinated us with religion. That's what he indoctrinated us with: religion, philosophies. All right, teachings about other gods. Teachings that have nothing to do with the Bible. All right? And we should know that why. God will cut. We should know that why. The so called white man in his Christianity celebrates what? Native Americans murder, right? On a holiday called what? Thanksgiving. During Thanksgiving, they celebrate the murder, the rape, the torture, the enslavement, the marching of the Native American Indians. All right? So we should have nothing to do with the, the philosophy of our slave masters. Our children are put to shame, told that they're lazy. A white man in North Dakota says, I'm not going to hire a Native American. Why? Because they're lazy. Who else do they say is lazy? Negro in Toronto, West Indian in Toronto, us. Who else is the last hired and last and first fired? We are. We share a bond with the First Nations, black man in Toronto, Haitian man in Montreal. We share a bond with the First Nations. We share a bond with the Native American Indians. We were both oppressed, both in poverty, both fleeing, fleeing from a terror, a terror like the so-called white man. We don't. Khan on Khan. Our priests are burnt. Our priests are burnt, burnt, gone. It says in the book of Maccabees, that, that the priests had no more strength to worship at the altar. The Native American Indian brothers, men, don't have strength. Don't have strength to come come uh, uh, into the truth. Have strength to get high. Have strength to, to do the acts of the so-called white man. We're burnt out. We're destroyed, man. <laughs> the men that would not adopt Christianity were murdered. Burned at the stake. Read on. Our Levites are are gone into captivity. Our Levites are gone in captivity. Our priests became athletes. That's what it says in, in the book of uh, Second Maccabees. All right, the priests had no more courage to serve at the altar, but went after the game of discus. All right, they went to become athletes, just like the brothers today going into the uh, white man's professional league. What I mean by going into the white man's professional league is, okay, Kobe Bryant is an NBA basketball player, right? Colin Kaepernick was also an NFL quarterback. You, you get my point? Like, Colin Kaepernick was doing his job, but would not submit and cower to the so-called white man's oppression. Kobe Bryant just absolutely became a white man. Michael Jordan just absolutely became a white man. That's what it's talking about. You understand? When it says our Levites are gone into captivity, when it says in 2 Maccabees that our priests had no more uh, um, strength Okay, to serve at the altar, but went after the game of discus. We went after Greek fashions, and we became wicked in those fashions. We don't. Khan on Khan. Our virgins are defiled. Our virgins, so-called Native American Indians, so-called First Nation. Tell me this is not talking about us. Tell me, man. 
Read that part again. Our virgins are defiled. Our virgins are defiled, man. They're defiled. Meaning what? They've been in threesomes. They've been on the goddamn disgusting understand, of porn videos. All right? And on Facebook uh, um, um, doing things which they ought not. You understand? Our virgins are defiled. They've been molested. The molestation rate in the Native American community is arguably the highest on God's green earth. Okay? One in three Native American Indian women will be raped. That is the highest statistic of any race in America. In America, you think about the absolute depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, a general lack of regard, lack of empathy that the so-called black woman carries from that trauma. Imagine that times, I think it's times two or times three for the Native American Indian woman. That's how much they we've been through on these reservations. Our virgins are defiled, man. We're in a deplorable state, Native American Indian. But here's the good thing. Here's the good news. Here is the gospel, all right? The so-called white man took this book and made us cut our braids off and made mass graves. But he, the white man has nothing to do with this book. The white man is going to be destroyed according to this book, sitting bull, crazy horse. The white man is going to be destroyed according to this book. According to this book, he's going to give us a kingdom. He's going to make our women virtuous the doctrines in this book. Right now, our women are defiled. Our, our women, they're the damn uh, 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 strippers. Cardi B, I don't know if you heard about this tribute question. Cardi B and Jennifer Lopez are getting together to make a stripper movie about real strippers in New York City that robbed, I think, like um, Wall Street executives. They, they weren't robbing, you know, Mookie and Jamal over in, in Bed-Stuy. They were robbing, you know, uh, Anderson Cooper. You get my point to Vince McMahon and Donald Trump, right? After they smacked him on, on his behind with the stack of newspapers, all right? Which Donald Trump, Donald Trump likes to get spanked by newspapers. That's uh, spanked on the behind with the magazines. That's why he didn't invade Iran, all right? Trump wants to watch Mexican women and men drown. And, and other than that, he's not doing a damn thing, all right? And Justin Trudeau admitted that the Canadian government dealt horribly, all right? with the uh, uh, Native American Indian women. I've read uh, um, stories about how the Royal Mounted Police gang raped a Native American Indian woman and then told her not to tell anyone about it. The goddamn Mounties, all right? That's what's going on in British Columbia, man. Our virgins are defiled, read on. Kind of kind, our wives ravished. Our wives are what? Ravished. All right, we get a woman, right? Sitting bull, running water, running bear. We get, we get wives. Our wives have been ravaged. More often than not, the woman we get with has been molested, man. She's been raped. That's the state that we're in. A terrible state. A terrible state, man. Coerced into sex. Pressured into sex by someone in her damn family, man. A child molester. Our wives have been ravished. You understand? And more often than not in Canada, raped by a damn white man. All right? In British Columbia, there's a, a devil they caught, all right, up in British Columbia. And during his confession, there was an uh, undercover agent, right, that went to him and said, Yo, man, like, why did you do it? Why did you rape and murder this little 14 year old girl over in British Columbia? He said, I did it because she was Indian. Do you understand what that means, First Nations? So called, so called uh, Iroquois, so called Native American in Canada. That the white man chooses to rape our women because he knows he can get away with it. And nobody's going to do a damn thing about it. Our wives are ravished. All right, read on. I don't want Our righteous men carried away. Righteous men carried away. Read on. Our little ones destroyed. Our little ones destroyed with Christianity. Destroyed now with drugs, methamphetamine, whatever other chemical they can pump into the native Indian community, alcoholism. Read on. Our, our young men are brought in bondage. Our young men brought in bondage. Read on. And our strong men are become weak. Strong men are become weak. Strong ones, okay. The ones that are able to, to maintain this walk, in this life, go to college, get a college degree, 
go and become professional athletes, they become weak. They put on a dress. All right? They go, they go and shave their beard and eat pork and get with get with Whitey, all right, in Edmonton and in Winnipeg. Get a white wife. Become they are men have become, they become weak. You understand? Become effeminate. Leave the hood and, and never give anything back. You become weak if you do that. You know why? Because now those resources aren't coming to the ghetto. They're not coming to black people, Hispanic people, Native American Indian people. And if you're getting with people outside of your race, you sure as hell, your money is not um, uh, going to them. Your money for sure is not going to them. So our strong men, they become weak. All right? This scripture applies to the First Nations, to the Native American Indian. <laughs> Why? Because we've been destroyed. We're also going to cut another myth. The so-called Native Americans in Canada did not get to Canada by the Bering Strait. The Bering Strait is a myth that was pushed by the Catholic Jesuits. Give me 2 Ezra 13 and 40. Colonel Khan. We're going to set the record straight right here. The ISUPK is going to answer the, the you know, our lifelong question of where did the Native American Indians come from? You learned, you sat, we sat down in school, right? History, high school, middle school, open up the books and saw, oh, look, the Native American Indians, they came from the Bering Strait when that was a damn lie. We're going to show you where the Native American Indians came from. When you have the scripture, read. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth. 13, verse 40. In verse 40, Colonel Khan. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Osias the king, Osiah the king. Those are the ten tribes. Those are the ten tribes. Who are the ten tribes? The ten tribes are the tribes that were cast, okay, that were cast out first by the most high. Solomon had Solomon, who was a Judite, had sex with white women, Arab, Chinese, African, every race of woman under the sun, which was disgusting, which is what split the kingdom and rent the kingdom, split the kingdom, cut the kingdom in two. It is what separates us from Native American Indians to this day. It is what separates the Hispanics, the so-called Guatemalans, the El Salvadorians, the Mexicans with the Negro, the, the West Indian, as well as the Haitian. To this day, it started with Solomon's sin, and then we broke apart as a nation. You had what was called at one time the Northern Kingdom. There is no more Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, all right, because Ezekiel, as it says in the book of Ezekiel, excuse me, the, the Most High would take two sticks and make them one. So there's no more northern kingdom. I hear that being, you know, being said, northern kingdom brothers, southern kingdom brothers. There is none of that. There is no northern and southern kingdom. There are Ephraimites, Judites, Reubenites, Manessites. You understand? We're, we are one kingdom now because Yahweh died for our sins. Died so that we could be reconciled unto the Most High, both of us, Israel and uh, um, Judah. All right. The ten, the ten tribes, right? The ten tribes are the uh, every tribe except for Judah and Benjamin. The other tribes are the people you call today so-called Hispanics and the North American Indians. They were cast out of Israel first. All right. The Judites and the Benjamites stayed in Israel and were cast out finally in 70 A.D. The so-called uh, Hispanics and Native American Indians were cast out of Israel at around 721, 700 uh, BC during the time of the Assyrian Empire, the Kardashians. All right, that's who the Assyrians are—the Kardashians, the Kurds. All right, so some more filth that, that lives around Esau. All right, read it again. Come on, come. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of the out of their own land. Mm -hmm. in the time of Osea the king. Right, the time of Osea the king. Go ahead. Colonel Khan, who Salamanser the king of Assyria led away captive. Salmanasa the king of Assyria. Let me uh, uh, branch off real quick, if I may. Salmanasa was known for being uh, um, brutal, particular, particularly brutal, all right? And 
when you go and do research about the Assyrian Empire, the Assyrian Empire were sticklers on deportation. Now, that's crazy. That is absolutely insane if you think about it. Because the Assyrians had the 10 tribes in captivity, the so-called Hispanics and North American Indians, right? The same exact people that the Assyrians had in captivity, the American government is saying, no, 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 you can't come in here. We're going to come deport Mexicans, right? El Salvadorians, right? We're going to come check your papers in Canada. They've been doing that since Assyria. You got to understand this. The white man is an idiot, all right? So he's not going to come up with his nefarious plans, his evil plots. They don't come from his own mind. Why do you think there's a Washington Oblis, all right, in D.C.? Because they get the plans, the framework, the laws for this country from ancient Egypt, all right? They model the um, the societies that came before them, all right? That's what they do. And they, 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 they make it stronger and more, even more brutal, all right? This is, the, that, this is the most brutal captivity in human history, all right? And it's been achieved by the so-called white man. He got his policy of strict deportation from the Assyrians. You can go and look it up, where scholars have literally found the connection between America and ancient Assyria. Go look it up. Assyria was warlike. Assyria liked to invade everyone. Assyria also had a problem with terrorists. You can go look that up. They had a problem with rogue individuals coming and attacking them, all right? And these same individuals couldn't fight them head on, but they would attack their nodes or their out, out, outposts. Which is the same thing they do to the white man in France, attacking the white man's outposts, all right? Praveen Shabashikar, are the Eskimos in Canada considered Israelites? Praveen, is, is your... Um, what ethnicity or what race is your father? I don't think you ever answer that question. And also, Praveen, I, ex I expect, I said it, I'm saying it every week, I expect to see you in that Toronto class. You know what I'm saying? Give that Toronto class a hand, all right? We're going to have class in Toronto coming up. We're going to have camp, Praveen. We're going to be speaking on the street, all right? Yeah, I want to see you out there, all right? And I want to see you in that class, all right? Type in, you know, the ethnicity of your father. All right, I'm going to give you my numbers. You can contact me directly. All right. Uh, are the Eskimos in Alaska considered Israelites? No. The Eskimos in Alaska, they're Japhites. They're the Japhetic people. The Eskimos, uh, they, they even scholars mention that they're different from the First Nations, that they're different from the Native American Indians. The Eskimos are from the same family as the Aboriginal Australians, from the same family as the Polynesians, the Samoans, the Hawaiians, etc. All right, to answer your question. But I'm going to type in the address for the class in Toronto. Read the scripture again. Colonel Khan. Those are the 10 tribes which are carried away prisoner out of their own land. Right, so-called Colombian, so-called Venezuelan, so-called Argentinian, um, some of the tribe of Levi, so-called, uh, some of the so-called Haitians, some of the so-called Brazilians, so-called Venezuelans, so-called Cubans. All right, read on. In the time of Osea the king. In the time of Osea the king, go ahead. Whom Salamansa, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. So they did what? He, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. Carried them over the waters, <laughs> so like, until they came into another land. So they were brought from their captivity from Israel to their captivity all right to Assyria brought on boats you understand we don't Colonel Khan, verse 41 but they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt they took this among themselves that they would leave this country Get away from these heathens, these Kardashians, these so-called white people, Africans. Go ahead. Colonel Khan, verse 42, that they, might keep, that they might keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Right. They, we wanted to leave. So-called First Nations, Native American Indians, Puerto Ricans wanted to leave. So-called Mexicans wanted to leave. Okay. Assyria wanted to leave Assyria, the Middle East, 
and go to another land to keep their law, to keep the laws of the Most High. Read on. Verse 43. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. And they entered into the Euphrates. I want to get a. Um, Go on, sir. Do we have any water? No, I think not water. Right, Khan. Um, they entered into these. Read that part again. Khan on Khan. And they enter into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. Go ahead. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they pass over. Held still the flood until they pass over. The flood is the Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean to this day is an extremely t a tumultuous uh, um, ocean. Bear with me one second. I'm going to share the screen with you to show you the path of the North American Indians of the, the First Nations and how we've gotten to this land. All right. All right. I'm sharing the screen. Okay, can everyone see this uh, image? No, Khan, I can see it. I can see your screen. Okay, Khan, so this should be good. Let me um, let me zoom in real quick. All right. So, uh, go ahead, brother. It's what? Okay. Okay. So we had the. <laughs> So like we have the Tigris, and we have the Euphrates River, right? This is Israel, all right? This is the land approximately at the time of the Assyrian Empire. This is all we had right here, all right? You had the Northern Kingdom, which was up here in the north, and the Southern Kingdom, which was down here in the south, all right? The Assyrian Empire came from over here, Iraq, Iran, and that and this, this area more so over here. They came and they dominated the known world, came down here in the Saudi Arabia, dominated Iraq, all right, dominated the Turks, not the Turks, but the Hittites, the Africans that were up here, and took the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians from here, right, carried them up to where? Where are you going to go? Where's the first place you're going to hit? The Euphrates River, all right, Salaki. But if you take people from here and move them this way up to your home, all right, which is this area down on down to here, Iran mostly, you would go to the Euphrates River. From here, they transported the so-called Hispanics and Native American Indians up river, all right, up river to this area. This general area. You can go look it up. The Hebrew captives. Look up a map of the Hebrew captives during uh, Assyria, and it'll show you they're up here somewhere in this general area. Why were they kept up here? They were kept up here to defend Assyria against invaders from the north. All right. Defend. They were set to defend the outpost to be in the military, which is the same thing, the exact same thing the so-called white man uses us for today to be cannon fodder. We use to go into their military do all of their experiments, all right, die from being injected with syphilis, and um, do his bidding, all right? We were taken up to the Euphrates River. Matter of fact, let me get a uh, map. Uh, spare me one second. Read the, read the last part you had again. Got on kind. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Right. Um, uh, one second, let me
All right, we're back. Come on back in. Truthful question. Go ahead and re invite you. All right, hold, hold your questions. I saw your questions that you typed in. Bear with me one second. All right. It's, 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 um, whatever we're, we're going into is not, is not well liked. Right? All right. All right, you're back. All right. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go before all that happened. Let's go into a map of the Middle East. All right. Uh, while, while I'm getting that, I wanted to answer a question on uh, online. An individual asked, brother, sister, whoever. Warrior King said, IUIC say, according to the Bible, a man should not have his head covered. All right. Uh, let, let's answer whoever this is asking about uh, head covering. <coughs> uh, give me the scripture that he's talking about, uh, praying and prophesying with your head covered. You know, um, head covered. First uh, Corinthians two question. Carol God. If. Um, First Corinthians eleven four. Okay, okay. This is First Corinthians eleven, chapter eleven, verse four. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Every man praying is or prophesying, <coughs> having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Our head is not physical. Our head is spiritual. Our in that our head is Yahweh Shah, who's not with us physically right now. A woman, her head is with her physically, so she gives honor to him by putting a physical covering over her head. Men, our, our um, leader is not flesh and blood like the, same, the exact same way we are. You understand? It's, it's not physical. All right? So upon our heads, our heads should be uncovered, not covered. Read on. Count on con, verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Yeah, so, so if she prays or prophesied with her head uncovered, she dishonored her head. Read on. 
for that is even all one as if she were shaven. But kind of kind verse six. For if the woman be not covered, all right. So, so you get that. You get that right. The man should um, not <coughs> put prayer prophesy with his head covered. So the IUIC, which has been caught multiple times with transsexuals, um, now states that a man cannot speak about the Bible with a headpiece on. I guess. Um, the first thing is, is you have to ask the IUIC, is a crown a head covering? All right, because they'll say in the same breath that we're going to get crowns on our head. The IUIC cannot accept a crown from Yahushai if they can't wear a head covering. All right, read Revelation 19 and 12 for the, the, the Christians, small group of Christians. All right. Revelation 19 and 12. Read it when you have it. All right. Oh, God. IUIC say, according to the Bible, men should not have his head covered. All right. So essentially they're saying, I guess we have our head covered. Read the scripture. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and um, on his head were many crowns. Were what? Many crowns. So he couldn't have his head covered. Read it again. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Were what? Many crowns. Were what? Many crowns. See this, warrior king? On Yahweh's head are many crowns. So anyone telling you to not wear a headpiece, a crown is a headpiece. They're telling you to not put on a crown. And that would tell me enough about the organization and their goals and their aims and who they really are. The scriptures say that the spirit speaketh expressly. You can hide things, all right? But the spirit, the manner of man that you are is always going to come out. And the manner of men, the spirit that they are in is to conform, to accept, and to love white people, all right? To accept sin while, while gleaning on to, grabbing on to the Hebrew Israelite, what they call a movement, all right? They're going to fade away. Just like leaves fade away in the in, in autumn, in fall, in the fall. Why? Because their men have sex with transsexuals, all right, and they lie about the Bible. If you cannot wear a head covering, then you cannot take a crown. IUIC cannot take a crown. That's fine because they are not going to get a crown. All right, they're not going to get a crown. The Lord is not going to give a crown to a group of men that cannot stop transsexuals. All right, multiple times in their group. And men the lie of the Bible. All right. So uh, a crown is not a head covering because a crown leaves the crown of your head uncovered. All right. I have a headpiece on. My head is uncovered. All right. Why? Because the crown of my head, this is the crown, the top part, it's uncovered. All right. So our heads are not un are not covered because the crown is not. Uh, covered. Give me the law in the Bible where a priest must have his head covered. All right, go take me to Exodus. <coughs> Grab me one second. I think it's Exodus. Give me Exodus, the 28th chapter. Oh, God. Yeah, garments. So, Exodus, the 28th chapter, it gives you a sum up about the garments all right, that a priest would wear. All right. Bear with me one second. We'll find it for you. Warrior king. But a king wears a crown, so. 30, uh, verse 38, 36. Read it. Kind on kind. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it like engravings of the signet holy holiness of the Lord. No. Oh, oh, wait. Read on down. Read the next verse. And thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it be upon the, the mitre. Mitri. The, the mitri, upon the forefront of the mitri it shall be. Right, the forefront of the mitri. All right, warrior king, the mitri is a head piece. It is a head piece. All right, the priests were instructed to wear a head piece. All right, you must wear a head piece. You teach a class, now I should be K. You do not have to wear a headpiece like 
You do not have to wear a headpiece if you're conducting a, say for example, like like a radio show, like Crossline Radio. If you ever watch Crossline Radio, pay attention to the uh, captains, Captain Tazariak and Captain Katazai do not have a headpiece on because you do not have to. That is not a class. You understand? It's a radio. It's a radio. It's a, something promotional that's done for the school, but it's not an official class. When you're in a class and you're conducting the duties of a priest, you are to cover your head. You are to wear a head covering. Mitri is a form of head covering. All right. There's also the tam, which is the beret that we wear. There's also the um, <coughs> Damien like the band bandana, the headpiece, which is what I have on here. Um, we also have the war scarf. All right. Why do we wear those? Because the men in the Bible wore them. The, the Exodus, the 28th chapter, it's not, you know, what you can wear, what you might be able to wear. This is what a priest must wear. A priest would have a head covering on his head. Right. <coughs> Take me to Ezekiel, the 24th chapter. Where it told me, to, we're told uh, the Lord told Ezekiel to bind the tire on his head. The Lord told Ezekiel to put on a headpiece before he prophesied. Um, the IUIC, they're amateurs, all right, in that they are not properly dressed, all right. If I were taking out a loan, all right, and, and, and I came into the bank and there was some cat dressed in a damn, um, uh, dressed in a, you know, Dressed in UFC gear, I wouldn't trust him as much as if he were in, you know, banking banking attire, or what the white man calls formal attire. If you're coming to get a surgery, all right, and you and you go into the surgery room, and the anesthesiologist and the damn surgeon are in a damn Hawaiian t-shirt, okay, with flip flops on, you're not going to take them as seriously as if they had their on their surgeon's apparel, <coughs> their professional apparel. Carlo Khan, sir. Our professional apparel. Read the scripture. Uh, well, can I can I just read the the very next line that, that goes to the uh, Exodus? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Go ahead. And it shall be and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead. Uh huh. And, 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 right upon his forehead, meaning that that's his headpiece. Exodus the twenty eighth chapter is is showing you us an outline of professional attire, business attire for a priest. You have business attire for being a banker business or professional attire for a surgeon, two different things. Business attire for being a janitor, for being a plumber, for being a mechanic. And then there's business attire, professional attire for being a prophet, a priest. Business or professional attire is included with a headpiece. All right? A headpiece must be worn. Okay? Uh, give me the scripture in Ezekiel <coughs> to the 24th chapter where the Lord told Ezekiel to to put on the tire about his head. Colonel Khan. Right, I'm sorry, they didn't wear a damn um, a Mitri either. All right. For me, and I'm waiting for the answer, all right? Go ahead and um, copy all that in. I expect to see you in the class. Uh, go ahead and sign in as well. Sign sign in, all right? Don't be shy, we're not, we're not sharks, all right? Uh, read. Ezekiel 24, and what, what's the verse, sir? Uh, that's a good question. Try um, 17. I don't know it exactly. Khan Khan. Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 17. Forbear to cry, making no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire to thine head upon thee. Do what? Bind the tire upon thine head upon thee. This is where the Lord told a prophet to bind the tire of his head upon him. To put on a headpiece. And the most high told a prophet, man of God, to put on a headpiece. Read on. Colonel Khan. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet and cover not thy lips. And do what? And cover not thy lips. Go and speak. Go and speak. When a man or a woman is in mourning, they'll typically will become reserved, or be, will shut down to cope with the tragedy that just happened. The Lord didn't allow Ezekiel to cope with tra that tragedy that way. Lord didn't allow Ezekiel to have pity. Civilians can have pity. This is for the Akium, especially the Akium, okay, in Canada. You want to become a, a trooper? You want to become an officer? You want to become a, a, a man in charge in Canada? 
you're going to have to, you understand, live like Ezekiel some days. All right, you're going to have to be absolutely tired, sad, worn down, and you're going to have to bind the tire upon your head. Bind the tire. All right, the brother's coming into Canada first, okay? You, you're going to have to be, you understand, pillars. You're going to have to be goddamn pillars to the brothers that come, come in later. All right? That, that's what the hell is going to have to be. The brothers later, they can, you know, have this problem and that problem, this and that. The brothers coming in now, you, you got to be absolutely solid. All right? Absolutely solid because this thing, it hinges on, on, on you. You understand? <coughs> hinges on the brothers in Canada. You got to make no mourning for the dead. People around you are going to die. All right? This goes for the sisters as well. Tons of us got Facebook friends, friends we got from the world in Canada. They're going to die. Many of us lost uh, um, friends, loved ones, in the while of the truth. You gotta make no mourning for the men. Understand that they were in the world. And bind the tire upon our head. That's what we have to do. Read on. Count all kind. And eat not the bread of men. Fast. Fast. He didn't eat during during camp. All right. When he didn't bind his lips, he went out and spoke. Where did the prophet speak amongst the people? What is that called? A camp. Read on. Down Khan, verse 18. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even and my wife died. And at even my who died? My wife died. Imagine you're you go to camp, right? You're going to camp, right? And at even at sundown, your wife is dead. Dead in the goddamn ground. All right. Uh, the Lord sh 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 um, <coughs> read up a few verses. The Lord smote her with a, a stroke. Yeah, that's in verse 16. She had a stroke at even and, and died. He had to go out and speak. He had to go out and do it. This was his wife. That's the woman you lay with damn near every night. The woman you give your body to and, and take hers. You get my point? She died. He had to continue to walk and be strong. This scripture, I pray this doesn't happen to brothers today, but what he went through was written for us to learn. It's going to be all right. You understand? You can make it another day. Know that the truth is it's not too difficult. Know what, you, what you're going through is not the worst thing on the planet Earth. No, it's not. You're not going through the worst pain that's ever been felt in human history or the worst sadness because men's wife's Wives die and they continue. <coughs> so what are we still hung up over? A little weed? Put the damn weed away. All right? What are, you, what are we hung up over? Our family? Damn them. Okay? Show that you love them by coming into the truth, whether they like it or not. That's how you really show them that you love them. All right, so that's the headpiece. We wear it because we're professionals and they're not professionals, right? Right? They're telling you they're not professionals. All right? If I come into the doctor's office and the, the, the goddamn first person I see <coughs> when I come to the front desk is in business apparel, I can safely assume, all right, that he is not a doctor. All right? I can safely assume he's a receptionist or she's a receptionist. When I see that cat in the back comes in with this, with this, uh, the stethoscope, I forget what they call that, that checks the heart rate. He comes in with his heart rate checking device. Comes in with the Go ahead. Stethoscope. Stethoscope. I thought it was a stethoscope. God. And he comes in with his stethoscope and his smock. You know, that's the doctor. Right? We're the priests and prophets of the most high, and they're not. All right. Um <coughs> take me back to the scripture about the North American Indians. Get back to Second Ezra 13 and 40. Okay, okay. Drop, drop down to 43. So they went when they went to the Euphrates. 43, kind of kind. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 43. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. They entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. We just showed you what that was. Read on. Kind of kind. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed, si then showed signs for them and held still the flood until right. so they were passed over. Flood is the Atlantic Ocean. Hold on one second. I'm going to get a map of the um, Middle East. All right, so this is a map of the Middle East. You saw the Tigris and the Euphrates are approximately running here in Iraq. 
If you come out down the narrow passage, you'll go into the Persian Gulf. They went into the Persian Gulf, came around Saudi Arabia into the Arabian Sea. From the Arabian Sea, let me get let me just get a world map for you. Now, all this was done in around 700 BC. All right. How do I know that? Well, you can just go ahead and look up. All right, the, the first or the largest Native American civilizations. The first thing that you'll find is many of them started around the same time, which was around 700 to, to 600 BC. And many of them were in, <coughs> bear me one second. Many of them were in South America. I'm going to show you how that's the case. All right? So this is Iraq. We went around the Gulf of the Persian Gulf, the Strait of Hormuz, which the white man's about to get his tail handed to him right here. Okay, right here. You want to see where the bully's going to get jumped? He's going to get jumped right here. But in any event, uh, going down the Persian Gulf through the Strait of Hormuz, around Iran, and they had a great way to go. We're going to read that. It's a long journey. Get through Africa, all right? And when they get got to West Africa, there's a current that runs to this day, <laughs> that is what the, the Colombian exchange is based off of, uh, um, this current will run you from West Africa to Colombia. What was one of the first great Native American uh, civilizations? The Incas. Where were the Incas? Were they all the way up here by the Bering Strait? Uh, hell no. The first great Native American civilizations were all here. Aztec. Like the Aztec. You know, it's like the Aztec up here. Maya down here. Inca, right? Mapuche, the tribe of Naftali, down here. The Quechua, Quechua, Asher, up, up in here. All right? The, the Amazonian Indians in here. The, this is where the great, uh, the first great Native American Indian um, dynasties or, or kingdoms started. Why? Because it's a straight shot from the old world to what the white man called the new world. We're going to read it. Read. Khan. Verse 45. For through that country, there was there was a great way to go. Uh -huh. Of a year and a half. A year and a half. It took Christopher Columbus about that time to sail from where he was to the Americas. It takes about to go around Africa, to go to the Americas. It takes about a year and a half. Read on. Count on Khan. And the same region is called Astareth. Arsareth. Arsareth. Arsareth is a, it is a bastardization of the Hebrew word Arathaza, which just means land. That's all it means. Arsareth does not mean Turkey. There's no land in Turkey called Arsareth. Arsareth is, is Arathaza, which means land. All right? It got to a place called land. All right? A place where never mankind dwelt. Mankind never dwelt here. How do you know that? The so-called white man, when he came, when he first invaded, called it what? He called it the new world, all right? Because in that sense, they were correct in that this was a world or, or a society, <coughs> or better yet, a plot of land that hadn't been lived on for that long, all right? Um, and that's it. That's, where, that's how the First Nations got to Canada. They got actually to South America first, and then migrated north. It's damn near till the founding of America, Aztecs were migrating from Mexico to Iowa. All right? So, so the Native American tribes moved northward into Canada. But that's how we got to Canada. The so-called white man that pushed the Bering Strait myth, his name was Jose de Acosta. I'm going to get him for you. So you don't think we're, we're making things up. We do our research here in the ISUBK. All right? <coughs> Block it. I'm going to get it for you. Um, any questions, type them in. Questions, type them in where I find where this devil lied. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get it for you. Where they said he hypothesized. First of all, he, that's not even, what they say about the North American Indians going across the Bering Strait, that's not even true. It's a hypothesis. All right? I'm going to zoom in on the key part. Bear me one second. All right. 
I'm going to read it in a form more concise, in a form more concise than that employed by his predecessors, Francisco Lopez J. Gomara and Ovedo, he treated the natural and philosophic history of the new world from a broader point of view. All right? Translated, he made stuff up. All right? Now I'm going to continue reading. In it, more than a century before other Europeans learned of the Bering Strait, Acosta hypothesized that Latin America's indigenous people had my peoples had migrated from Asia. All right? He hypothesized it. Who was Jose de Acosta? Jose de Acosta was a 16th century Spanish Jesuit missionary. The Jesuits are the Catholic Church's CIA. If you post information that the Jesuits do not agree with, they make your information myth. All right, which is why people walk by us and laugh at us because our information is not is is not backed by the Jesuits. But saying black people are Africans, that is backed by the Jesuits, so everyone accepts it and it's taught everywhere. All right, saying the so-called Mexicans, so-called Native American Indians came across the Bering Strait was accepted by the Jesuits. All right, and anything that was against that was not accepted by the Jesuits. All right, we're going to read. In a book called The Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, all right, is by uh, Ronald Sanders. I, I don't think you can get this book for under $3,000 now, the original version. This is the OG version, all right, not watered down. Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. All right, I'm going to hold that up for a few seconds for you to you can screenshot it. You can write it down, all right, hold up for about 10 more seconds. <coughs> All right, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. We're going to go to page 368. They did yet know what was become of the ten tribes of Israel. Right, bear with me one second. Manasseh had answered that at least some of them were in America. And Winslow, who had himself often observed the customs among the Indians of a Reportedly Judaic character, all right, the white man in, in Netherlands said, all right, the so-called Jewish man in the Netherlands said that the customs of the North American Indians had a Judaic character, all right, such as the rigid separation of women during their menstrual period, was now convinced that this was so, that what was so, that the Native American, that the ten tribes were the Native American Indians that were in Quebec, that were in Mexico, that were in Pennsylvania, that were in New York City. That's who we are. All right, I'm going to read on page 369. Vanessa, of course, considered the migration to have occurred somewhat after the Assyrian conquest of the northern kingdom of Israel and the dispersion of its ten tribes. Where did the Native American Indian come from? Who the white man said was the ten tribes? Their migration came, or was to have occurred somewhat after the Assyrian conquest of the northern kingdom of Israel and the dispersion of its ten tribes. So the, the Native American Indians, the American Indians who had customs of Judaic character, migrated to the Americas after the Assyrian capture. That is in the Bible, and that is in this book. That's why this book is several thousand dollars. That's why this class damn near got shut down twice with the damn internet. All right? Because the white man is a devil, and he does not want blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians be linked in any way. All right? Um, do you have any scriptures? Uh, hold, I'm holding. Or do I have you holding any scriptures? Do you have any scriptures um, on death? Go ahead, read. I have uh, Ecclesiastes 6 and 2. Go ahead. A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanted no he wanted nothing for his soul for all he desired. Read it again. Donald Khan. A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanted nothing for his soul 
for all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth, eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. This is a what? This is vanity, and, and it is an evil disease. So the North American Indians, so-called Native American Indians, right, live in a land called America, right? Live in a land called Puerto Rico. Live in a land called Mexico that's full of wealth. That's full of wealth, but they we don't prosper from it. Read it from the top again. Kind of kind. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor. We, he gave us riches, wealth, and honor. He gave us New York City. New York City was owned by the Manhattan Indians. Right. We didn't have fences like the white man. My, my, whatever was mine was yours. Why? Because we were brothers at one time, North American Indian, Negro, Haitian. All right. In the land we had, Puerto Rico, Quebec was filled with riches, fur. All right. Lawful furs. Okay. And, and salmon. And the timber. Read on. Count on con. So that he wanted nothing for the soul of all that he desired. <laughs> so that he wanted nothing. Read on. Count on con. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof. The Most High has not given us power to eat thereof. We are poor in the richest countries on the earth. Canada and the United States. We're suffering on a land that has so much chromium deposits like those brothers in Canada. There's a tribe in Canada that's living on chromium deposits and the white man on purpose put poison in their damn um, uh, water system. Go look it up. There's a Native American Indian tribe in Canada. I want to say Canada or might even be the United States that is living, I believe it's Canada, that's living on Canada's largest chromium deposit. All right. And for some reason, coincidentally, every time you take a shower, you use the water to wash yourself, you get rashes. Brothers there were there with rashes. Say they just took a shower. Why are they doing this? Because the white man is trying to run them off their land. Why are they being run off their land? Because the most high had not given us power to eat off the riches that we have. <coughs> we're uh, um, from Venezuela, right? That's where we live. That's where we got to in this new land. Venezuela is home to some of the largest oil deposits on the planet Earth. And the white man's trying to rip, rip it away from us. The so-called white man wants to starve us the hell out of Venezuela so he can uh, gentrify it and, take su and suck up all the world's oil. We're sitting on Brazil, man. Brazil. You know what you can grow in Brazil? Everything delicious and expensive. All right. We don't reap anything delicious and expensive. We reap the favela. That's what we get in a place like Brazil. Are you kidding me? A tropical rainforest. You know, what, you know how much devils are paying for that wood that comes out of Brazil for their nice floors in France? In Japan? Man, forget about it. Forget about it. But the Brazilian Native American Indians in Brazil are fighting for their lives against loggers, uh, um, brothers that are going to log wood for the white men. Fighting for their lives on their own, our own land in the Amazon. All right, we don't. Con on con. But a stranger eateth it. Uh -huh. This is vanity, and it is evil disease. <laughs> it's a vanity. It's like, what's the point? And it's a what? It's an evil disease. That's why we succumb to alcoholism. That's the scripture that explains why we see North American Indians struggling the way we do, depressed and sad the way we do, because we're on a land that is beautiful. You can't reap it, North American Indians. So-called North American Indians, we don't reap it. Is that it on that verse? Khan on Khan. Give me, uh, who's the next one? Ecclesiastes 5 and 19? Khan on Khan. Oh. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. Uh -huh. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat their own. Every man to whom the Most High gave riches and wealth and the power to eat their own. See, so-called First Nations, we don't have power to eat of the wealth of our own lands. The so-called white man comes, runs in, and decides to build a damn pipeline running through British Columbia. We don't have the power to eat their own. All right? 
We don't have the power to suck up the chromium for our, from our own land. There's a white man trying to poison us out of it, poison us away from it. The Most High gives us power to eat the wealth of the land we live in. If we're not eating the wealth of the land we live in because we're cursed. Hold that. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Crown on the crown. This scribe, this, this scribe, this verse right here applies to every tribe in the nation of Israel. All right? We're all underneath these curses. And the tribe of Gad, so-called First Nations, are no different. Read the scripture when you have it. Crown on crown. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. That will not what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right, if you will not listen to the Most High, right? If you go and eat duck and sacrifice and worship totem poles, the eagle, and eat hawk, right? Have sex with other men's wives. Read on. Kind to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which right. I can do this day. Native American Indian, we have to do all his statutes. We can't be alcoholics. We can't be child molesters. We can't be uh, strippers and whores. All right, and on back page and selling our daughters and sons to white men on boats in Minnesota. You understand? We can't sell our daughters to white men in Thunder Bay, in Winnipeg. All right, that's that's against the commandments. The scripture says, ye shall not prostitute thy daughter, Native American Indian, not for meth, not for booze, not for nothing. All right? The scripture says, buy the truth and sell it. Now, we got to buy the truth and stop buying meth. All right? We got to buy the truth and stop buying the white man's poisoned 40 bottle. All right? It's lawful to drink alcohol, but not to be a damn uh, drunk alcoholic. All right? Constantly drunk all the time. Spending the rent money on alcohol. That's when you have a problem, Native American Indian. And we do those things, the most high is against us. Read on. Kyle Khan. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The curses have come upon us. What are some curses? Poverty is a curse. Poverty is an absolute curse. Alcoholism, the suicide rate, the depression rate, child molestation rate. All those are curses for not obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Power. That's where it comes from. That's the origin and source of all of our problems. And so-called First Nations, we, we need to understand <clears throat> that our destruction, us being in such a wealthy land like Canada, not being able to eat any of it, being at the bottom of Canadian society, being the last hire in the first five, having some of the highest unemployment rates in the planet Earth, that's because we are cursed. All right, read on. Carol kind of just goes into the curses. Do you want me to read the curses? Um, God, read, read, um, just read one, uh, two verses. Verse 16, curse shall thou be in the city, right. curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall we be in the city, man. We're cursed in the city, cursed in Winnipeg. All right, in Winnipeg, stories of brothers taking shotguns and blowing brothers' legs off. All right. Winnipeg's routinely the murder capital. Who's in Winnipeg? Justin Trudeau? Huh? Emmanuel Macron? Huh? No. Sitting bull. Crazy horse. And, 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 and uh, um, pretty eagle. Pretty hawk. And raging waters. They're in Winnipeg. Winnipeg is routinely Canada's murder capital. Go look it up. <coughs> Thunder Bay, routinely Canada's murder capital. Both of them highly occupied by Native American Indians. Winnipeg has the largest population of uh, um, Native American Indians or indigenous people of any North American city. Any North, there is no North American city with more Native American Indians in it than Winnipeg. All right, read on. So we're cursed in the city and we're cursed in the field. Read on. Verse 17. Curse shall thy curse shall thy baskets and thy store. Right. That's why we can't bring enough in because our basket is cursed. Whatever we bring in, something horrible is going to happen to it. It's going to get robbed. It's going to go to someone else. All right. I mean, let's get some of these curses. All right. Cursed in the city, and you understand, cursed in the field. We look for something else.
All right. Uh, back up. Back up. Yeah. Test, 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 test. All right, wait for Trooper Bokwashi to get back in. In the meantime, however, we're going to go ahead and, and share and continue in that video all right, that we were watching. All right. members of the Ogallala Lakota Sioux Tribe on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, but the sale of alcohol is banned. Pine Ridge is one of the poorest communities in America. Over 80% of people here are unemployed, and up to two-thirds of adults suffer from alcohol addiction. 80% unemployment rate. The unemployment rate in Afghanistan, a war zone, is 22%. All right? Beginning in this summer, following a spate of violence and unsolved murders, the stores were temporarily closed. The state Supreme Court is now considering whether to make the move permanent. Just a few metres down the road, a group of Lakota campaigners camped out since the closure. They don't plan to leave until the final decision is. Okay, so that's what's going on. That's the sum up of every Native Indian reservation of Winnipeg, of Thunder Bay, death, murder, and, and getting high. All right, and the white man shipping the, the alcohol to a destroyed people, the most high is going to destroy the so-called white man. All right, that's a prophecy that will be on Gad as well. The Gad will be destroyed. Get me, um, get me what I'm asking for, officer, uh, Trooper Kwashi. Get me up Genesis 49, I think it's verse 14, all right? Come on, come on. This is Genesis chapter 49, verse... It's verse 14, it's right? Verse, it's verse 19, sir. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Gad, a troop shall overcome him. Who's a troop? The Canadian Mounties, right? They ride horses. They're a cavalry, right? The United States cavalry, all right, which is the most popular image we know of uh, Native American Indians getting defeated by the so-called white man on, on horses. That's a troop. That's a cavalry. All right, the people that were defeated by Calvary are God's chosen people, the people that Christ died for. All right, the people that Yahweh died for. The people who he sent his disciples out to go and save. All right, and Yahweh, okay, that's another thing too. Yahweh, he knew about the, the nine and a half, the ten tribes that are over here. All right, I'm going to hold the scripture that we're reading right now. I want to prove it, all right, to our uh, listeners. All right, get me, um, uh, other sheep I have. One second. Yeah, other sheep I have, not of this fold. Give me John 10 and 16. All right. Okay, okay G, when you call Jesus Christ, I was not walking around, oh, brother, oh, it's okay, you're a whore, you're a slut, it's okay, you, you were going to the damn gay pride parade, it's okay. Okay, that man they call Ches Cesare Borgia, the man we believe is Jesus Christ. He was he was L he was LGBTQ all the way. That cat, that's that sucker on a cross looking looking like Justin Timberlake. All right, that's who that cat is. Okay, the one the real Jesus Christ, his name is Yahweh. All right, in the Hebrew, he was a so-called black man, and he sent his disciples out the so-called Native American Indians, and he knew that the Native American Indians, First Nations, Asherites, right, the Quechua, the Inca, the Maya, the Tarahumara in Mexico, he knew they were over here. Read. John O'Connor, this is John chapter 10, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. And who? Which are not of this fold. Other sheep I have. Who is Christ? Who is Yahweh talking to? I want to say he's talking to his disciples. Okay. Yes. Let me get the, let me get the context. Read up two verses. Colonel Con, this is uh, John chapter ten verse fourteen. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Mm -hmm. Verse fifteen. And the Father knoweth me, even so. Even so, know I the Father. And I lay down my life for, for the sheep. Verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, 
and there shall be known. There shall be one fold. Okay, how shall I was talking about how shall I was talking to the Sadducees and Pharisees? All right, what verse are you at? Um, at the end of verse 16, sir. Read verse 16 again. Colonel Khan. Verse 16, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Now, the Roman Catholic Church, which is the house of Satan, all right, which is the seat of Satan, which is a fraternity of child molesters and rapists, all right, and disgusting, violent men who are not men of the Most High, not priests of the Most High, all right, they would say this scripture means that it's open to everyone, Italians, Vietnamese, Chinese, Africans. Well, Yahweh Shai, when you call Christ, was saying he has sheep which are not of this fold. He was talking, first of all, he was talking to the side of the Pharisees, which were Judites, all right, which were Israelites. That's who he was talking to, okay? When he said, I have sheep that are not of this fold, all right, Yahweh Shai told his disciples <coughs> in Matthew 10 and 5 through 6, in Matthew 15 and 24, all right, I am not sent. I believe that's in um, that's in Matthew 15 and 24. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep, all right, of the house of Israel. The sheep are always talking about the Israelites, the Yahushai being the lamb, the sacrificial lamb. So the sheep, the other sheep are the other Israelites, not of this fold. The fold he was looking at was the fold of the Jews, which really is um the tribe of Judah. The word Jew is short for the tribe of Judah. All right. The word Jew became the Israelites after the ten tribes came to America. But to be um, accurate, you want to say Israelite. We're talking about every tribe. All right. We're talking about the, the, the Judites, so-called American Negroes, and you can say Jew, etc. But yeah, Jew you can say means Israel means Israelites or uh, the tribe of Judah. All right. The Christ was looking at the Jews, the tribe of Judah, some of Benjamin. So you can understand. All right. He said there are other Israelites I have that are not here. All right. There are Israelites that were in Corinth, Israelites that were in Elam or, or East India, Israelites that were in Iraq, Iran, Mesopotamia, Israelites in Crete on the Mediterranean islands and Israelites here in America. Now, I wish I was aware of all those uh, um Brothers and sisters that went over there and set up the Incas, Mayas, Aztec. All right. He sent Paul out to do what? To get all the tribes. All right. Paul said this in Romans 11 and 1. Had the Most High cast out his people? May. For I am of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul wasn't a Judite. All right. But he was from the tribe of Benjamin. All the tribes can come back to Yahusha. All right. The first nations can come back from death, from alcoholism, from uh, murder, from life on the reservation, which they say we can't be healed from. We can be healed from. All right. We can be healed from. it. We can be healed from being overcome. We're going to show you that we are going to overcome. We're going to overcome the reservation. We're going to overcome the white man's rape, white man's child molestation, white man's alcoholism and the white man's drugs. Take me back to Genesis 49 and 19. Colonel Khan. Genesis chapter 49, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Dad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. He shall what? Overcome at the last. He shall overcome at the last, man. The people that you shove in the houses with no damn doorknobs, people you put in unemployment rates of 80%. 80% is not, you know, okay, 80% is like getting a 20% on an exam. You understand? Like getting a 20% on, like failing an exam is generally because you just did not prepare. You understand? If you prepare and do the work, et cetera, you'll generally be all right. But failing something, just not doing something, it's it's not an accident. It's something that was planned. It's just something that that person didn't want to do. You understand? The white man plans to never give you a, us a job, First Nations, Iroquois, <coughs> Seminole Indian, Native American Indian. The white man never seeks, does not want us to have a job. That's why it's 80% of the employment rate. I mean, there's something you can do there. You can grow corn, you can herd chickens. You understand? 
They can deal with trash. They can throw trash away. The white man doesn't give us anything on these native Indian reservations. But guess what? Guess what, so-called white man? We're going to overcome it the last. All right? We are going to over the Native American Indian is going to overcome everything that the white man has thrown at us in the last day. Child molestation, alcoholism, all of it we're going to overcome. Um, drop the scripture. Give me, give me uh, Revelations, the seventh chapter. Colonel Khan. All right. The Native American Indian is going to rule the planet Earth in the world to come. There are going to be 12,000 Native American Indian men that are going to be the ruling government. They're going to be like the be like uh, angels, so you can understand it, in power and in might. You're going to be so so much like a god, the heathen are barely going to see him. All right? We're going to, and are going to rule the planet Earth. Let's get it. Revelation 7 and verse um, 5. Count on kind, this is Revelation chapter 7, verse 5. And the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Judah, 12,000 so-called Negroes. All right, primarily the ones uh, living in America are the Judites. Go ahead. Count on Khan. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Those are the so-called uh, Seminole Indians, Reuben. All right, the wild ones, the cult. All right, we don't. Count on Khan. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed Gad. Who? Gad. Who? Gad. First Nations. Read it again. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. The Iroquois. Tribe of Gad. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. 12,000 Gadite men, 12,000 so called Native American Indian men are going to rule the planet Earth. The scriptures say this in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, so called white man in Canada, all right, that you are the end of the world. You come from a man named Esau, and the Most High, all right, not the G20 summit, not Japan, not the United Nations, but the Most High said that your society is the end of the world, all right, is the end of all societies or worlds. Esau is the end of the world, end of the present society of whores, of legal weed, of, of um, massage parlors and strip clubs, end of that society, all right, and Jacob is a, is a society that cometh after. All right, who is Jacob? Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, so-called First Nations. Our world is coming soon, man. Hold on. Hold on in Winnipeg and in these ghettos and in these damn reservations, man. Because our salvation is nearer than we can exp we can think of. All right? We have to get off booze. We got to become the princes of the Most High. All right? Princes of the Most High aren't are alcoholics. When I say get off the booze, I mean stop being an alcoholic. All right? A, a drink moderately is lawful, but being a, a pissed drunk laid out in the street is not. We have to stop using the white man's meth. Stop prostituting our sisters on these damn reservations, man. And we'll be brought out of this destruction, brought out of this hellhole they call a reservation. 12,000 will rule the planet Earth. That is beautiful. That is beautiful because those are the people that nobody thinks can rule any damn thing. Those are the people that Tim Hortons won't hire. All right? Those are the people that Montreal won't hire, won't give housing. All right? We'll let them freeze to death in the streets. Those people. Those are the people in Montreal will let stew in homeless shelters and three quarter homes and halfway homes become wards of the state or go into Canada's foster care system. Those people are going to rule the planet Earth. And the ISBK, we're giving you the things necessary in order to rule heaven. All right? Because that's, what's, that's what our rulership is on this earth, First Nations. It's heaven. That's what the kingdom of heaven is when Native American Indians rule. All right? Um, <coughs> drop that. Give me Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. About oh, the God. American Indians. Bear with me one second. I'm going to post a sign out link. All right, I'm going to end class a few minutes early. All right. The water for the brothers and sisters that tuned in. All right. 
didn't sign in, didn't say anything. I appreciate we, we appreciate the viewership. Please like this and share this. All right, if you're in Canada, tell your friends, buddies. All right, and push push them to peer pressure, man. Every everybody in the damn world push pushes. You understand sin as peer pressure. Everyone in the damn world pushes. All right, blacks and Hispanics to go down to the LGBTQ. All right, gay parade in Toronto, in Montreal. That's the sign in link. Click on it, sign out. All right. Everyone pushes us to that, but no one pushes us to righteousness, man. No one pushes us to those things. We should push our brothers and sisters to righteousness, righteousness like peer pressure. All right. Give me um, the scripture in Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter, about the um, tribe of Gad. Come on, come on. It's Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 20. And of Gad, he said, Blessed be he that enlarges Gad. Blessed be he that enlarges Gad. The brother that goes out to those native Indian reservations and wakes up Gad on the native Indian reservations in Nebraska, the native American Indian reservations in the Dakotas is going to be blessed. Why? Because Gad is not enlarged right now. Gad has been reduced to nothing. Damn near it's wiped off the face of the earth in America because of the damn white man. Blessed is he that enlarges Gad, that increases Gad in the truth. Read on. Colonel Khan, he dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. He dwells like a lion. Gadites aren't afraid of the damn dark, okay? Like uh, some Judites are, all right? <coughs> Gadites live in places where, you understand that, are just absolutely rough. North Dakota is a place with bears. I believe they have wolves, all right? It can go from negative 35 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. North Dakota is some of the wildest uh, weather in the entire United States. And that's where the Gadites are. Why? Because it says he dwells as a lion. That's why uh, we know of the Native American Indians as being people that live in the wilderness. They're not afraid of the outdoors. All right? That's what it means when it says he dwells as a lion. All right? And he does what? Read the part where it says tear at the head. With the, with the Khan. Khan. And he teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he teareth the arm with the crown of the head now. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians will understand what that means uh, um, really quickly. Now, let's use an analogy. When you say someone tore out of here, Trooper Pukwashia, what does that mean? He hauled ass and, and got out there fast. He hauled ass. That's an excellent way to put it. Or he, he ran quickly. All right? If you tear the arm, you move the arm quickly with the crown of the head, what are you doing? Ripping the scalp off. You're tearing the scalp off of a damn uh, a devil, all right, off a U.S. cavalryman. And that's what the Native American Indian did, okay, in Canada, in the United States. Scout the so called white man, okay, that was raping their family, all right, murdering them and trying to make them extinct off the face of the earth. He scalped them, man. Scalped them. And that's what the Native American Indians would do in the last days as it was a blessing given upon them from Moses. All right. That's what we were doing. That's in the Bible that we would do those things. Native American Indian scout the so-called white man spiritually, not literally with the damn knife and all that. Don't do that. You know how we scout them? You know how we do it? We scout them by, you know, saying, stop being alcoholics. That's going to scout the Canadian economy. Come on, man. Native American Indians aren't on alcohol, aren't pissed drunk alcoholics and spending all of our damn money, aren't getting high on meth. There will be no, the, the amount of prostitutes in Canada is going to go down said tenfold if Native American Indian mothers aren't on meth. If, if fathers and mothers aren't on alcoholics, there will be no prostitutes for the white man to have on his damn ships coming from Thunder Bay to Duluth, Minnesota. Go look it up. They're having sex with babies on those goddamn ships. Someone did a report on it as part of their research paper for their master's degree. They're having sex with children as young as infants on the Duluth trading ships. All right. That wouldn't happen if there was no uh, uh, pretty eagle on methamphetamine. There was no Native American Indian high and drug out. All right. The ISBK is set, sent to the Native American Indians to get our people off of drugs, get our people out of a servant and slave mindset and mentality into a mentality of being rulers and leaders. The Most High God loves those drunk drunk Native American Indians on the reservation. Christ died for those brothers drunk and keeled over, all right, 
puking every damn where on the reservation. All right. Now, how should I die for those brothers taking showers and having the acid burn and make rashes on their skin because the water's poison? That's who Christ died for. Why? Because that's the people that need saving. All right. We need it. We need saving. The Yahusha went up on that cross on the Native American Indian. All right. The Native American Indian can overcome, which is what he's going to do. All right. The so-called First Nations in Canada are the greatest race of people on the face of the earth. They are brothers and sisters to the so-called um, Seminole Indians. Right. The so-called Cubans, so-called Colombians, so-called Venezuelans, so-called Brazilians. <laughs> so-called uh, Peruvians, so-called Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Guatemalans, Dominicans, so-called Negroes, so-called West Indians, etc. So-called Haitians. We're all one people. We've got to band together with our brothers, man. With our brothers, because the white man has separated us, and the white man's motto, right? Julius Caesar's motto was what? Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. But when we're together, we're strong. The Native American Indians are the Israelites. I'm going to read one more quote from Lost Tribes and Promised Lands by Ronald Sanders, page 364. The woman got off and, and spoke to Francisco in an Indian tongue that Montezinos could not understand, although he could perceive that he was being identified in the conversation. She then turned to her male companions to explain the situation. Upon hearing her words, they rose, went over to Montezinos, and to, to his utter astonishment said, Shemai Yasha Allah, Yahawa, Allah Yahawa Akka. They have it written here in the white man's Yiddish, but that's not what the hell they said. All right, they said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is at page 364 of the Law of Tribes and Promised Lands. The Native American Indians spoke Hebrew. The first Negro taken to Canada spoke what language? African, M M Mubuntu? No, he spoke Hebrew. He was a Hebrew translator. You can go look it up in the, I think it's Black History of Canada. All right, why was he speaking Hebrew? They just, they just brought a Negro translator to speak Hebrew? No, because the Iroquois in Montreal were speaking Hebrew. The Iroquois in Montreal were speaking Hebrew. First Nations in Winnipeg were speaking Hebrew. That's the language, original language of the Puerto Ricans. The original language of the uh, First Nations, Native American Indians in, in Quebec. Okay, French is not our language, man. French is a language of our oppressors. Our original language is the Hebrew, the Lashon Kodash. This book does an excellent job of proving that even the Native American Indians is the brother of the Negro, of the West Indian, of the Haitian, of all the Israelites. That's why this book, I think it's running for a few thousand dollars. The original one, not the watered down one. But in the event, all right, get one and try and find on page 364 where it said what I just quoted, pages 364 and page 369, all right, along with page um, 187, 182, 368, 376, 365. That's what it is, Native American Indian in Quebec, in Toronto, all right? This is what it is. We're the greatest race of people. We're the lost tribes of the house of Israel that Christ, Yahweh Shai, sent us to, sent the disciples to. And we're going to go ahead and do it again on this side, all right, in America, in Quebec, and wherever so-called Native American Indians are scattered, all right? Because the so-called white man took Native Indians, you understand, to Spain, okay? There's some fool walking around, all right, watching the goddamn the Spanish, Spaniard soccer game, okay, that's a damn, that's a guy. OK, and the Lord is sending us to all of our brothers and sisters wherever they're scattered. All right. We're going to Quebec. We're talking about Canada. All right. But all throughout the Americas, in Europe and throughout the four quarters of the earth, blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians, a tribe. The so-called Native American Indians are the tribe of Gad. All right. And they're going to rule the planet Earth over the so-called white man. They will overcome. With that being said, I posted the sign up link. If you don't have your name. Go ahead and sign in, please, so we can keep up and keep up with the correspondence. Makes my job a lot easier. I appreciate it. With that being said, we're the ISUK, start out at 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. We're under Commanding General Yohana. We're the home of the truth. All right. Um, 
Uh, bear with me one second. I'm gonna grab the security announcements real quick, and then we're we'll, gonna we'll wrap the class. All right. Bear with me one second. All right, coming back. All right, so we got the security announcements. All right, uh, security announcements. We're the highest UBK starting out of One West 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Rule for new brother and sister. When a new brother and sister comes to the school, they are off limits for six months. They are to be saluted only. They are here to shed themselves of the world. If they need transportation, the teacher will arrange it. After six months, if your brother or sister has an interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or sister. There is another six months in which the brother and sister will court each other. After this six month period, the brother and sister will get permission from the head to marry. Tithes, which is a commandment. You can find this in the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 21. Book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. It means 10th in the Hebrew, Maishra. 10% of every penny of any increase the Lord gives you, give to um, send it to ishbk.com. All right, coming from Canada, send it to ishbk.com. Tithes is a law. It's a command, all right? Baba Kusha sent it. Priest fund, free will offering for the priest, not mandatory. It's whatsoever amount you would like. Upcoming holy convocations is the feast of the blowing of memorial, the blowing of trumpets. It'll be Saturday, September 28th, 2019. Black man, Hispanic man, Native American Indian, so-called First Nations. Come, get down, celebrate our high holy days. All right, your high holy days, the high holy days of the most high. All right, these other high holy days, trample us, make fun of us, and mock our death, which is what Thanksgiving does, all right? Remind Aki Nakwath, check out IHBK.com for updates, all right, and get in touch with myself, Officer Aban. Um, my WhatsApp is posted in the chat, all right? Um, I can post in the comments section of the video as well. Get in touch with me on WhatsApp pertaining to what's going on in Canada, all right? Um, if any brother wants to be a trooper in the school, start wearing all black. Boot shirt, pant, headband, and scarf. With that being said, I module, which means to stand. All right. Repalya hot with which means turn and face the east. All right. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. All right. Abba Melo. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. When I say, when I say, Akiva um, Wafi, repeat after me. You know, of course, if you're, you know, in your apartment or whatever, you know, don't get evicted. You understand? But at, at whatever volume you can speak, say it at say it. All right. But face the east. Okay. Abba Melo. Abinawa. Hey. Podash. Hayo. Shabka. Yahawa. Blakuska. Taba. Adizah. Ka. Hayo. Aisha. Bararatiza. Kawo. Hayo. Bashimayo. Afalonawa. Makam. Kao. Yawam. Basalaknawa. Kao Bahnawa. Kasalaknawa. Kao Bah Yanawa. Wallaha. Tabiara Nawa. Banasaya Wun. Abal. Awashai Nawa. Mayun. Rai. Kayo. Ka. In English, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, even Yahweh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So be it. Sar, which means to turn. Men of Israel, we're going to give this, the men of Israel one courtesy salute. Amadu Shabbat. Amadu. Barak. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai Barak Atham. All right. Yajim Atah, which means hands down. All right. Uh, we're going to do a salute for the sisters online. Sisters, Amadu Shabbat is right over left. Feet at a 45 degree angle with your head down. When we say Barak, you're going to put your right hand across your chest like so. And repeat after us. Men of Israel, we're going to give the sisters one courtesy salute. I'm at Shabbat. I'm at Jim. Barak. Yahweh Shemar. Allah Fun. Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. The sisters that are online, those of you that don't know, we just said, was the Lord watch over you in the name of Jesus in the bastard tongue? Or Yahweh watch over you in the name of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Matah, which means hands down. Class dismissed. All right. Shalom.